Then we have the next question. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdul Shaku Ake bin Mat Anwar. I have a question for you. Could you share your thought on how we can explain to the non-Muslim in an effective way and the Muslim on total devotion to Allah? Thank you. The student asked the question that how can we explain to a non-Muslim that there should be total devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, we have to prove to the non-Muslims about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are different types of non-Muslim. Some, some non-Muslim believe in God. Some, some non-Muslim don't believe in God. First, we have to prove to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. And as I mentioned earlier in my talk, that Allah says in Surah Dariya, chapter number 50 and verse number 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبْدُونَ That we have been created not but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. He is our sustainer. And if you ask any human being, he will tell you that yes, we have to love our parents, we have to respect our parents. Why? Because they gave us life, they gave us all this ni'amah. In this context, if you compare our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given everything that is there around us. When our parents take care of us, we respect them, we love them, and we thank them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all this ni'amah. That's the reason it is compulsory that we thank Him. This body that Allah has given us, the health Allah has given us, the food Allah has given us, we have to thank Him. And how many of us thank Allah for the ni'amah? And how many of us have, have ever thought that the air we breathe, the air, leave aside the other ni'amah, the air, if we don't get this air for a few minutes, we would die. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator who has given us all the ni'amah. Since he is the creator who has given us all these blessings, all these wonderful things, as a human being, it becomes our duty that we have to thank him. And there are various ways of thanking. In Islam, the word ibadah comes from the root word abd. Worship means ibadah. Ibadah comes from the root word abd. Meaning, a slave. So, worship, people think that worship means only salah. Yes, worship is one type of salah. One, uh, salah is one type of worship, which is a very high category. Giving zakat is worship, going for hajj is worship. But, as a whole, any commandment you follow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is ibadah. Obedience to Allah is ibadah. If Allah says not to have alcohol and you don't have alcohol, you're doing ibadah. Allah says don't have pork and you don't have pork, you're doing ibadah. Allah says you have to be honest and you be honest, it's ibadah. Allah says don't tell lies and you don't tell lies, that is ibadah. Allah says be good to your wife, if you're good to your wife, it's ibadah. So, following the commandment of Almighty God is ibadah. And since I mentioned earlier that this life is the test for the hereafter. Allah says in Surah Mul, chapter number 16, verse number 2, Allah khalaq al mawta wal hayata. It is He who has created the life and the death to test which of you is good in deeds. So, this life that we are leading in this world is the test for the hereafter. And our textbook and the rules and regulation is given in the Quran. So if we follow these rules and regulation of the examination, in the next life, inshallah, we'll go to Jannah, we'll go to paradise. So it's the duty of every human being that he follows the commandment of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we follow the commandment of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are doing ibadah. And if we do this, inshallah, we'll benefit in this world as well as the akhirah. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. I will tell you this, what you say 
you have come to know 40 years back and what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read the glorious Quran it's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 which says Avalam kafru. do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder what you're talking about the big bang I try to imagine compressing a spring I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller and I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring and when I let it go it bursts out it bursts out it bursts out the creation of the universe which you came to know 40 years back is already mentioned in this book the glorious Quran 1400 years ago who could have mentioned that in the Quran so the atheist will say maybe someone wrote maybe it's a fluke maybe it's a 